it is a pleasure and an honor to host this event and to have you here with us for these two days. Please prepare for the hot weather. Please hydrate yourselves. I'm a specialist in that for the heat wave. Not let your bodies uh, get uh, irritated. Uh, and there is a red alert in Portugal for for fires and, and the heat. But we will talk during the day and tomorrow and during our walk. Uh, so, uh, as you can see in the, the, uh, the board, our thematic citizens committed commitment to risk governance from inaction to co-decision and this is a challenge in the times that we are uh, going through uh, politically and socially and this is a big challenge. What is the role of citizens in risk governance? And for example, yesterday the Portuguese government issued 4 million SMS messages to alert for this uh, fire. Uh, do people understand what they are reading? Do, do they, in what actions do they translate? Did the representatives of the victims' associations and all the associations want to participate in risk communication? What is risk communication and how it's done? And above all, and that's thematic data shares a lot. Uh, can people remain or become citizens when they are confronted with catastrophes and disasters? A hurricane, a heat wave, uh, a forest fire with 120 people that died in 2017 in Portugal. These are the, the questions that we set when we talked about uh, the thematic alongside the dialogue with uh, the colleagues from the Society for Scanalis, uh, Europe and Iberian Chapter. So this is all challenge. I will uh, shut up and give the, the floor to the uh, colleagues that are here in the table with me. And I will, I'm going to present them and thank them for, for, being with us, for being with us. They will talk and then we'll go to the plenary session. But before I will explain the dynamic of our uh, rendezvous, of our meeting for uh, this long, hot two days. I'm not exaggerated, please be ready and drink a lot of water. <laughs> With uh, wine will be for the dinner. <laughs> so, at my left, Professor Luis Dias. He is the, one of the sub directors of the faculty, and I want immediately to thank for uh, the availability and the, the venue uh, and the, all the support that the faculty always gives us when we ask for free. For free. The, the faculty support for all events that we do here. So, before giving the word to him, uh, I would like to thank the faculty. Uh, Professor Sosa Ribeiro is the director of the Center for Social Studies, uh, where I am a researcher and a lot of colleagues. Uh, and of course, thank him for all the support uh, on the logistics uh, and all that. And uh, it is uh, it is known that we can rely on SES and you. On uh, my right side, uh, Frederick Buder. Uh, he is the president of the Society for Risk Analysis Europe. And uh, thank him to, to be here. It is uh, an honor to host this and to uh, discuss in a European context, of course, with a more global perspective, the questions of risk, citizenship, the future of our societies, and of course, climate change and all the changes and the challenges that we are going to confront more, not less, more, a lot more. And finally, <laughs> Sylvia Luis, she's the president of the Society for Risk Analysis, Europe Iberian chapter. And thank you for inviting us and for letting us uh, put this uh, event uh, into, uh, uh, into action. And now I will shut up and give the word to Professor Luis uh, Dias for some words. Thank you and welcome to our school on behalf of our director. Uh, for me it's a pleasure to be here uh, in this uh, opening session of the conference, uh, many for uh, three reasons. The first one is that I recognize the importance of this topic. This is one of the topics where as an academic and as a citizen I can appreciate the potential that exists in citizen science and in the communication between academia and society as a whole. Uh, this is particularly important in an age of fake news, in an age when 
politicians say we have had enough of experts and it lies in academics like you to try to make things better, try to make people, society as a whole, but also people in charge to understand the importance and the value of academia. A second reason is that um, this is a particularly interdisciplinary topic. And this matches well our school, which is also quite multidisciplinary. Although it is named School of Economics, it also encompasses uh, sociology, international relations and management. But we have colleagues uh, in law, in mathematics, in decision analysis, like myself, which is a, a related field also with uh, risk analysis. And it matches quite well this topic of risk analysis, where we also need sociologists, we need statisticians, we need psychologists, we need uh, law, we need a number of sciences. And if, I, if it's true that an academic might live a happy life in this field, only being, for instance, a statistician, uh, it is also true that to have an impact on the real world, to have an impact in society, any project must gather all the expertise from these different areas. And finally, it's also a pleasure because it allows me to thank my esteemed colleague, Jose Manuel Mendes, for his work on behalf of our school, which we quite appreciate. So he does not have to thank us for allowing him to organize this event here. It is our school that is thankful to him to bring this event to our students, to our guests and to our club. So thank you and I wish you all uh, a fruitful conference and I hope you have also some time to enjoy a little bit of this. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning everybody. Uh, on behalf of the Center for Social Studies, just a few words of welcome. I have nothing to add, very little to add to what has already been said. Just to stress, uh, first of all to thank you very much for his work over the years. The Center for Social Studies is a very large research center in Portugal, France is disciplinary, and, and there's an well over the years, over 15 years or any less or more or less, has been able to establish a very solid basis for risk, uh, for research on risk. The Observatory of Risk is one of the assets um, uh, at the center, and it has been able to correspond in a very productive way to the essential vocation of the center, which is a transdisciplinary vocation to bring together scholars and researchers from very different areas of research and risk, and risk uh, the analysis of risk, as you, has already been mentioned, is by its very nature a um, uh, quintessential uh, interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary in so it is really a, a, a very, um, uh, a very nice occasion to have this meeting here, corresponding to and, and uh, helping to enhance the work of the center um, in this area and uh, enlarging the, the very large networks already in existence also to this. Uh, uh, you were told you were having two very hot days, you need not be frightened. Uh, drinking water is a good uh, suggestion, but uh, do uh, uh, yeah. But uh, other liquids uh, may perform the same uh, function as well, so <laughs> do not refrain if, if need be. But anyway, uh, uh, understand this will be a very informal atmosphere. I took the risk of the, uh, uh, dressing uh, my suit today, uh, as I it was a bad move. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I should have uh, uh, adopted a more informal uh, gesture. But but anyway, uh, uh, thank you all for being here. I wish you all uh, two very pleasant days, uh, hard work, and also if you, you have the opportunity, an opportunity to get acquainted with our city uh, and with uh, our academic institutions in, in this city. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Before going on, I must stress that uh, the organizing committee have two more persons, has two more persons, 
the colleague Alexander Dallegan from the Faculty of Law that's been collaborating with us in the Mars University for 15 years. <laughs> and of course, Alexander Tavares, he is also a researcher at SESH and a, an expert in the field of risk and now in other functions. Uh, he sits in the national uh, uh, climate change, Portuguese National Climate Change uh, Agency or Association or uh, Board. And uh, thank you for, for, for them for, for helping me all, all together, designing, reading the posters, evaluating the posters, and all that. But I will talk with them uh, after uh, in more informal way and to put you acquainted with the problem that we have in the today's. Now, uh, please, Frederick. Frederick has a yes, so I, point. I thought, yeah, so <laughs> hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, Emmanuel, for the. Uh, nice introduction. Yeah, I thought I would put a couple of uh, uh, slides together. Um, just uh, first of all, a warm welcome from SRA Europe. Uh, so as uh, Jose Manuel introduced, I'm the president of SRA Europe for, for two years. Uh, you know, we have like a mandate, I think you will see that on other slides maybe as well, that, you know, uh, we aim to bring together individuals and organizations interested in risk analysis, in its various facets of risk assessment, risk management, risk communication, risk governance. Okay, well that's all very nice, but I wanted to stress, you know, what does it mean? Of course some of you are experts of some of these aspects, uh, but what I think it means more profoundly is not just developing work in some areas, it's actually that we perform, and something you already introduced us to, Jose Manuel, I think, we are actually performing some important uh, functions uh, in society in terms of, you know, the field of risk analysis can help to save lives, you know, whether we're talking about fires, whether we're talking about, you know, mitigation to climate change, whether we're talking about, you know, uh, side effects of medicines or foods, uh, helping to put it in the right perspective, uh, using risk, uh, the risk studies field can help to save lives. Uh, it can help to foster education, and we actually have uh, some programs are uh, undergoing on, you know, translating more risk science into education and improving policy. Because what we know is that a lot of the policies, we mentioned fake news, a lot of the policies at present, I would say, and that's very much the field I'm coming from, are not really science informed. We don't use enough risk analysis as a field to inform better policies. And we see, again, negative consequences in terms of loss of life, loss of resources, uh, poor allocation of resources, and etc. So, <clears throat> I wanted to start with that because I think that's very important. It's not just that you know we are developing research in different fields for the you know kind of uh, interest of you know progress in science, but we are also as a society connecting these progresses with very tangible uh, aspects and outcomes. And I think we are doing an important work here. So I'm very glad to see that you know, we are developing into uh, more activities. That's just a recap of you know, who we are at, because some of you may think, well, you know, what is SRA Europe? Maybe some of you are members, others may not be members. So just you know, to put some faces or actually names here. Uh, so I'm the president until 2021. Uh, Seda Kundak was our previous president. She's based in uh, Istanbul. We have uh, Hui here, who is our communication officer. So he's both a member of the uh, regional chapter and uh, the communication officer of the uh, uh, Society uh, for Europe, which is very neat because if you, of course, obviously, if you have things that you want to communicate, he's, uh, you have a direct access there. <laughs> and uh, what you know, what we've been doing, and I would encourage you to go on our new website, uh, we has been very much engaged in, uh, you know, designing this new website, and uh, I know that's not always easy. Uh, that's a lot of work, so thanks to him. Uh, but what you would see is, first of all, what we try to do is we try to lead risk analysis uh, as, you know, create a space, a forum for risk analysis in Europe. Uh, so, one beacon, if I may say, is our annual meeting. So the next annual meeting, the annual meeting is always taking place in June, 
will be in June 2020 in Helsinki, and I think uh, very kindly Jose Manuel printed some of the flyers for uh, the conference. So I hope some of you will be able to make it. I understand it's not always easy. Uh, there is a cost involved, etc. But that's the kind of main event in Europe. So, but we we're not, you know, um, for some time it seemed to some people that you know we were mostly revolving around having our yearly meeting. And I think it's great to meet once a year, but it's not enough. So what we're trying to do is a lot more now. So one is to reward excellence. So some, you know, awards, and I know that you know this is something which is very important both in this region and most generally for SRA Europe. You know, helping, for example, early career. So we are introducing an early career initiative for young, you know, academics, but also young professionals. We're not only an academic society. We try to connect the two, as I was saying. We try to make an actual difference. Encouraging also uh, the field to thrive. Uh, again, you know, we have to open doors. We shouldn't just talk to ourselves about, you know, the latest study that we did and the great results, but we need to engage with society, with government, but also with citizens through organization of workshops, courses, and other initiatives falling within the scope of SRA Europe. And I'm highlighting this because if you come up with ideas, they are as well, you know, welcome to be discussed. I'm not saying we can do everything. We have limited resources also in terms of sponsoring, but we can be part of uh, that. So why are we encouraging chapters? That's another question. You know, this or creation of new regional chapters is fairly new. It started in 2015, uh, where we created the Nordic and the Benelux chapters. And now we have Iberian, that was created in uh, 2017, and Dachau, which is the, the German-speaking chapter. This stands for you, Germany, Austria, uh, Switzerland, CH, and Liechtenstein, uh, was established in 2018. Why we did that is because we felt that um, not everybody can come to the annual meeting, that the visibility of SRA, again, is not always great, could be better, could be improved. So we want to bring down to the different regions, you know, the fact that we exist, but we want it also as an interaction with, you know, uh, the SRA Europe. Not just that you create activities, but really that we have, you know, productive exchanges. That's also why I was delighted to be, you know, uh, coming here presented to you, so that we can really see that we are all part of a family. And that's how I would describe SRA. We are a family. So you have SRA, uh, you know, the main annual event that takes place in the US. So for those who can go, you know, it's taking place this year near Washington DC, in Arlington, in uh, uh, December, every year in December. We have some regional chapters. The next meeting will be the Nordic one. Again, you know, don't feel that you have to be confined to your region. Of course, I understand, again, the potential limitations of uh, you know, finances, etc. But you may have to go, I don't know, for a research trip in one of these regions. You may have a part of an exchange. You may do a project which allows you to, to go. Then please go. Uh, please show your research, exchange ideas. Um, what we are increasingly doing as well through our websites and other means is you know, provide a lot of information uh, you know, you have to understand that we also, the journal risk analysis is linked to the society, so submit articles. Uh, journal of Risk Research is also another journal where you can submit, whether you're again an academic or a practitioner has been doing some interesting stuff, you, know, you can provide a viewpoint or an editorial, you know, it's not only for academics. Uh, and We've been developing a strategic plan, so I would invite you to surf a bit the SRA web pages where you see, for example, we have a new scheme for new initiatives at SRA level, so at the international level. If you come up with a great idea and you want resources, you can bid for up to $20,000 and you know, do some little research or something. So you can come up with ideas. Again, think about these things. So I really wanted to highlight all this because uh, it's much more than a couple of meetings. We also, of course, like to reward people who contribute, Rui. I had to put this, you know. It's great that you, you established uh, with others this uh, SRA uh, chapter and that, you know, again, it's two-way. So finally, just highlighting, you know, the next big event in Europe, which will be in Helsinki, uh, 14th and 17th of June 2020. You've got some flyers here. Uh, you're all very welcome 
uh, to, to come and discuss and exchange. Um, and I think from my perspective, that's all. Thank you. I just wish you all, you know, a good meeting. Thank you. <laughs> I give the floor to Sylvia. Thank you. It's a pleasure being here. We hope the weather does not get so, so hot as we no, okay. are expecting. Air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> And well, as Freddie has already and has already framed, um, we're here today, and it's a pleasure being here in this second meeting of uh, of our chapter of most of us of the Iberian chapter. Um, so this is our second meeting. Last year um, was in Toledo. Um, we have already heard about the the main mission and why it exists and the, the main goals. And for for the Iberian chapter we would like to focus in the particular issues of this region. So the Iberian chapter includes Spain, Portugal, and Andorra, and our main goal is to become a focal point for communication, for exchange of ideas, not only between academics, but very importantly, between academics and practitioners, and also between the various fields that integrate risk analysis, that as you know, it's, it's a very, very broad uh, broad field. So basically this would be the most uh, important specific objectives of the uh, SRA Iberian chapter. Well, a little bit of history following also in, on Frederick's words. We, we created um, SRA Europe Iberian in 2017 during the, the conference in Lisbon that was organized by Hui, myself and, and other colleagues. And we had last year our first meeting in, uh, in Toledo, in Spain. So some of you um, attended. It was organized by Maria Mary, that unfortunately could not be here today, but it's for good reason because she's preparing for her cathedra. I don't know if you can say that in English, but I, most of you Portuguese and Spanish understand. Um, and uh, also in this last meeting, we had the official election um, of, um, of the boards and many of the members are here and I would like to thank you all for, for being engaged and for helping in the organization and the establishing connections and, um, and so on. Well, this year we have here our, um, our conference and I would like to, to thank to the, to the local organizers, to José Manuel Mendes, Alexandre Tavares, Alexandre Aragão, also to the structures of the University of Coimbra, to the Faculty of Economics, to the Center for Interdisciplinary Research, to SERJ, and to the Risk Observatory for all the help you have provided in organizing this, this uh, event. And so it's focused on citizens' commitment in risk governance from inaction to co-decision. And finally, next year, we will have the, um, the meeting in Alicante, Spain. Uh, it will be organized by Jorge Alcina Cantos. So we expect also to see you there. Let's see if it's also so warm as this one, because I think it's becoming like a, always a characteristic, because last year in Toledo, for those of you who were there, also it was really, really, really hot. And uh, finally, I'd like to thank all of you that are here today present uh, to make this, uh, this chapter, to, to keep growing this chapter and making it stronger and has really a focal point of communication. So thank you all for being here today.